Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the Murdoch DeFi YouTube channel. And in today's video, what we're going to be doing is kind of doing a deep dive into Horde's most recent update. We're going to look into the numbers uh, because if you're like me, based on, like, I mean, really, I thought everything, I, I kind of had a hint that things were going south or changes were coming based on the Zon zombie or the ZNFT integration within the protocol. However, like it, it's better and easier to make decisions if you have all of the information, right? So what we're going to be talking about today uh, is just that, right? We're going to go into the actual numbers. Uh, I'm going to give you kind of my opinion with what I think is going on with the protocol, how people are using or interacting with it, the health of Horde in general. And, uh, and yeah, and, and, and also too, like my plan moving forward, as you can see here on the screen, I've got a little bit of Horde in my wallet and then also in the claimable. Like I still haven't touched it since they made the update and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, so if you guys appreciate this type of content where we deep dive into these projects, uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I, I, well, I finally got around to taking, being able to take the time out and really kind of deep dive into this and be able to make a decision or form an opinion on myself or for myself based on all the information that we've been given rather than just assuming shit and um, and thinking things are one way or, or just being bullish on the project for the sake of being bullish on the project because I've been in it since day one and I like Horde, I like the team. Uh, I think it's important to form an opinion based on all the information not just blindly follow people or YouTubers or whatever, man. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So if you like that content, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you do two things. First, smash the shit out of that like button because lots of time goes into investigating these things, guys. Lots of times go into recording these videos. Um, if I could name the amount of times that when I try to record a video and it doesn't go as planned uh, and I have to stop the recording and start from scratch, uh, especially when we do like long videos like this where we're taking deep dives, right? Uh, that being said, smash the like button so that way we can get as many people that are invested in Horde or thinking about investing in Horde, we can get them the best information uh, as possible. Also, if you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to join the community, all the links will be down below in the description. But let's go ahead and jump into Horde. So if you're unfamiliar with the recent changes that they've made, I know that I stated them in a video earlier on in the week, uh, but I can go ahead and kind of recap that for you. So um, as you can see here on the screen, it says all plots, all horde plots are infected. Don't worry, this isn't a problem. This is our way uh, or is our new reward structure. If a claim is made, your plot stone or rune will then mutate. Once it mutates, it is then producing 50% of the rewards that it was. So instead of that 1% of uh, per day that you're earning on a plot, it is dropped down to 0.5%. However, they have lengthened the amount of time that it takes for your plot to decay, right? So that is their trade-off there. Um, that is really the, the main thing. Um, however, some, some intricacies to, to kind of point out there, if you have an NFT attached to your plot, then you are not... Um, at risk of losing those rewards. So they're going to still produce the same amount, whether um, like essentially they don't mutate, so they're not losing. So like this one um, where we have an actual NFT attached, that, that rewards that it generates in particular are not going to be affected. Um, so if you have NFTs attached or you have Uber plots, then you are not going to be affected by this. Um, obviously for me, I only have a few of them. Um, so I could go in there and claim these and be able to, to, to do that and not have to worry about mutating the rest of my plots. So as it sits right now, until I claim, all of these plots are still producing 1%. However, for whatever reason, if I wanted to go here and claim this 17.49 horde tokens that is available to claim, it would then mutate all my plots that do not have NFTs attached to them and would drop down our rewards by 50%. So instead of earning that 1% a day, we're earning 0.5%. However, the decay dates change, right? Hopefully that'll make sense. Um, also, another thing that's very important to understand, which we're gonna be talking about extensively today, is the fact that they've changed their sell tax. So they have now implemented this new dynamic sell tax where 
if the price is below $100, so we pull up the chart here, if the price is below, um, you know, $100 here, I'll just go ahead and put in some lines here. If it's above $100, then there is a, or sorry, if the price is below $100, there's a 20% sell tax. If the price is between uh, $100 and 104, come on, come on. If the price is between $100 and 104, there's a 10% tax instead of that 20% tax. And then if it is above $104 per hoard token, then there is a 0% sell tax. Now, it looks like I've made some lines before. However, you can see the frequency in which the, the, the price is over $100. It doesn't happen very often. So unless you're sitting and watching the hoard chart all day, every day, then it becomes an issue to where now, if I wanted to go and sell any of these 48 tokens, I'm likely gonna be subjected to a 20% sale tax. Um, but we'll talk about what the plan is to do with that later on in the video. Some things that I want to point out is if we go to Dune and you look, you just type in Horde, um, this, this Dune dashboard will come up and it gives you a ton of information with what's going on with Horde. And a lot of this stuff is why I wanted to talk about this. This is why I wanted to make this video. Um, all this information is, has definitely helped me understand what's going on within the protocol even more, right? So one, the first thing that I want to address is what happened when they started this zombie NFT mint. Um, and we can look back at what those dates were when they minted. Uh, so around uh, October 5th, you know, and, and here you can see, right, you, this is the BUSD inflow and outflow balance on the liquidity manager. So this is how much money is in the liquidity manager, right? And essentially, they're using that money in the liquidity manager fund to keep the price stable. As you can see, this price has been dropping or the, the balance rather has been dropping. And you can directly correlate it with the date that they started the NFT mint and people were starting to, to mint these NFTs. And what has happened is a lot of people saved up their hoard tokens. And then since there wasn't this 20% sales tax, they just took the 10% the hit, sold off a bunch of hoard tokens and used those funds to, um, to go ahead and mint these zombie NFTs. Now that put it, like I said, it put an immensely large amount of sell pressure on the Horde token. And um, yeah, you can see here that since then, you know, or during that time period, you know, the the balance of the actual amount of money that was in the, um, the liquidity manager drastically dropped. So I'm of the opinion that the team monitors this stuff. Obviously, they have to. Um, and probably what happened is like, it, it probably came last minute after they realized what they had done. Um, and then they started to go ahead and implement these new things where they're changing the reward payouts and they're, they've, they've put into play, uh, this mutation here where, uh, you're dropping your rewards if you go ahead and claim. So I would imagine that the bulk of people like myself, have just been accumulating. They haven't claimed yet because they don't want to run the risk of dropping those rewards by 50%. And obviously if they're not claiming them, they're not selling them. Um, so this has been a somewhat temporary solution, right? So that's the first problem. NFTs put immense sell pressure on the, on the hoard token, which caused the, the liquidity manager to spend more money than it would normally uh, to keep that price relatively at that same $100 mark, right? Um, reading further through um, some of the information that they offer here on this Dune dashboard, uh, you can see currently the liquidity manager balance, $1.7 million. The um, TVL from the zombie NFTs, $1.6 and the hoard BUSD liquidity pool at 1.4 million, almost 1.5 million. 
uh, you can see here, this kind of charts out the, the TVL, the zombie NFTs uh, over, you know, the time period when it launched, right? October 4th, and this directly correlates, right? With the timeline here. Um, and another thing that's very interesting is, is I noticed one thing that, so when they initially had the mint, they, and maybe I, I don't think I caught it right away on the 4th. I know that they had to like shut things down um, and kind of pause it for a day. But I did know before the mint started, for before the first mint started, uh, they did have an option on the dashboard to be able to purchase your zombie NFT with Horde tokens. However, when I came back the following day, that was no longer an option, right? So you can only mint with BUSD, causing people or forcing people to, instead of using Horde tokens to, bar to purchase these zombie NFTs, you would then have to sell your Horde tokens uh, for BUSD and then use that BUSD to buy the zombie NFT. So I don't know what the reasoning behind that was. Could could the the implementation of using Horde tokens to um, to purchase those zombie NFTs taking a lot of the pressure off of cells, it, then inducing or, or or mitigating the fact that they had to drop rewards, uh, maybe. But I guess we'll never know because you know obviously we're we're past that now. Uh, coming down here, you can see the uh, what we see the the Horde BUSD liquidity pool, and that's been on. Um, you know, a pretty stagnant road there uh, is, is in terms of the liquidity pool, but that's fine. Uh, zombie NFT mint by date. As you can see here, they have a total of 4,144 Z NFTs minted out of a total of a 10,000 um, mint, right? And you can see, obviously, they had a big influx on the first day and second day, and then it's kind of died off since then. Not too many people... Um, are minting them as of now. Um, also, hoard total. So this is going. To, this graph is essentially a graph of the amount of people on a daily basis that are creating plots, whether they're Uber plots, uh, Uber plots, regular plots, stones, or runes, right? And as you can see, um, since they implemented the new mechanics on the 14th, the amount of plots. And uh, in total, right, regardless if it's an Uber plot, regular one, stone or rune, has drastically, drastically decreased. So we went from, um, you know, let's just say low on the, let's say, 170 side, all the way up to some days, 300, all in that ballpark somewhere. We went from that to, um, to 29, right? to less than like, okay, we had a 39 uh, on the 20th, eight today. Um, so in my opinion, this really gives you an idea of the sentiment here. And this just further backs up the fact that people are choosing not to, not to claim their tokens, right? If they're not claiming, they're not, uh, they're obviously not compounding and using those tokens to buy more plots. So you can kind of see where this is going, right? If you have a bunch of people that are accumulating tokens in their claimable at a moment's notice, like if something happens within Horde that could upset people or, or something crazy happens, something unforeseen, you're going to have a shit ton of people that have a bunch of tokens in here that are claimable and... If that is the case, then everybody could be able to claim and then sell them. Obviously, you're taking that 20% sale tax hit because if that were to happen, obviously the, the price would be below 100. Um, so there's just something to, to keep in mind there. Uh, moving forward, obviously, this correlates directly with this top graph here, Horde Plots created by date. Um, that also gives you an idea of the overall sentiment within the community. And I put out, I put out a poll a few days ago and I launched my last video earlier in this week where I was talking about a couple different projects and we touched briefly on Horde, obviously not this in depth, but um, I did put out a poll here on YouTube asking people what they thought about the uh, the updated like tokenomics or reward structure. And it was a resounding like negative uh, opinion. Now, the question here is, is 
obviously we know that a lot of people that created plots on day one, um, if they're not claiming, they're not mutated, they're not changing their decay date. So that also means like, can Horde sustain itself over, I believe, the next 90 days or so um, to wait for a lot of these plots to start decaying. As you can see here, this is my first plot that I bought. And I believe this is one, this was on day one, or maybe this was, uh, yeah, this was on day one. I used the, the pre-sale uh, to jump in on this one. But this decays on in, in January of 2023. So not too far away. Uh, we're going to start seeing a lot of people. So 87 days, just about 90 days. A lot of people's plots starting to eat, starting to decay if they don't mutate them, right? Or if they don't, yeah, if they don't mutate them. So they're infected if they don't mutate them, right? So that's another interesting thing to, to think about. Um, let's keep going. Uh, these are all those. This one here... Um, I think is a, is a very valuable metric to, to also follow uh, is the hoard tokens locked by date. As you can see here, it's been a resounding yes that people have been compounding, right? They're claiming their tokens and then they're going in here and, um, and uh, oops, sorry about that. They're going in here and recompounding. However, that's not the case anymore, right? Like, and, and this takes into account everything like NFT purchases, this, this is all, all the tokens that are locked into the protocol on a daily basis. Um, so whether that's people buying these NFTs, which they're releasing more and more, um, obviously to, to drive revenue, but that also means that if people haven't claimed and they attach one of these, uh, these NFTs, then that's not going to impact the rewards. Um, so it's almost like they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. And I think what they're just trying to do is just get from now uh, until the next 90 days where they start to see a lot of plots that were created in the beginning of the protocol starting to decay. Um, and here you can see like the amount of tokens locked up over the last, even over the last week since they made that most recent uh, update it pales in comparison to what they were. You know what I mean? We're looking at less than 400 tokens a day sometimes even down below 200 when it was up about 2,500 a day. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just crazy. And you can tell that the community sentiment is not good for Horde as of right now. Um, because at the end of the day, Horde is basically a Ponzi, just like every other node protocol. So you just got to keep that in mind. If they're, if they're not attracting a bunch of new investors, if, if Horde tokens aren't continuously being locked, in, in greater, greater amounts by the day, then that, that kind of spells out trouble for Horde as a protocol. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's this, all this information is what I use to like form my opinion. So you might ask Murdoch, okay, well, now that you have all of these tokens, what are you going to do? Um, and we'll get to that. Uh, I do want to also bring up the fact that this is the holders from the Horde token contract. Uh, obviously, these first couple uh, of addresses are the, the protocol's holdings. Uh, but you see, uh, now granted, this is like less than 1% of total supply. That's cool. But still, it just kind of could, could paint a picture and give you a potential warning of things to look out for, things that I'm monitoring on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, maybe not day to day, but I'm definitely checking these things out. Uh, you see, you know, big whales holding large amounts of horde tokens in their wallet, um, myself included right here. Uh, so it, it just kind of leads you to wonder what could happen to where all these people here, um, and the list goes on and on and on, right? All these people, what could happen to the protocol for to make all these people sell at once and take the 20% sales tax hit? Uh, because that, I know for me, if, if I know that that's the case for me and I'm not selling because I don't want to put myself at risk to losing an additional 10%, then um, 
then I imagine that's what a lot of people's sentiment are currently. So we're just kind of waiting out uh, for the next 90 days and until we can potentially start to see the protocol rebound. Um, because as of right now, in my opinion, it's not healthy. Um, so if you were to ask me, uh, I'm not in Horde right now. Should I get in Horde? Uh, my answer would be probably not. Um, and, uh, you know, I understand that there's a lot of Horde, Horde people that might feel, uh, you know, a different way about the protocol in general. But there's one thing for sure is that you can't debate the data. You can't debate the numbers, right? You can have a sentiment for a protocol. You can love the developers. You can love the team. You can love everything that they've done over the last almost year, right? However, like you can, you can appreciate the team and understand that there's this protocol is getting more and more risky as the days go on to jump into as a new investor. Like those things can be synonymous, um, synonymous, right? I think that's the right word, <laughs> but you get the picture that I'm trying to paint. So let's get into what I plan to do. Obviously, we got almost four token, four or sorry, almost fifty horde tokens in my balance. Um, we've got almost eighteen claimable. What am I going to do? So what I've been doing, or, or I'm about to do, and that's the reason why I wanted to make this video, is head on over to Bog Swap and put limit cells in, so that way. I can try to mitigate any risk of losing that extra 10% tax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to BogSwap, um, app.bogswap.finance. You can come in here and be able to set limit orders and stop losses. Um, so we're setting limit sell orders. I'm probably going to put half or 25 hoard tokens in here to swap when the price of hoard is above $100. And then I'll also put the rest up just in case, just in case uh, the price spikes up over $104. And then that way I would get away with no sales tax. Uh, as far as the claimable tokens, I am just letting those continue to, um, to add up in here. And I'm paying very close attention to, like I said, not only what happens within the community, um, whether that's updates, things within that they're doing. I know that they're coming out this game too, but um, historically speaking, play to earn games don't have much of any uh, impact on a on a protocol. Who knows? That might be completely different with Horde. Maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong and people are saving up their Horde tokens so that they can go ahead and use those, hopefully within the Wasteland Defense game. But I don't know. I know I'm not. Uh, as an investor, I don't care about the play to earn game. Like, sure, that's a cool, it's a cool thing to to push out. And I know that the team has been working so hard on it. And all the renders that are coming out so far look awesome. Um, and I'll probably dabble a little bit, but it's not like I'm banking on the fact that that's going to save the protocol. Um, again, just trying to take an objective look at what's going on behind the scenes with the actual numbers. So like I said, um, that's what I'm doing with my Horde token balance. And then also on the claimable side, I'm just letting those accumulate, watching the numbers, um, watching the things that the team say within their discord. And then, you know, if it comes down to a play where I need to go ahead and claim all those tokens, then that's what I'll do. Um, however, who knows what could happen in the future. They could put a, you know, they put, could put a countdown on that. So where you wouldn't be able to claim your tokens or something, right? But this is the this is the inherent risk that we take as investors when jumping into protocols like this, right? We are at the whims of whatever they decide is fair for everyone or for, for their best interest or for the protocol's best interest in regards to health, all that, right? That is, that is what we take on as investors in terms of risk. So just know that going into this uh, and, and however you choose to, to play this, um, there's a lot of game theory that goes into it, right? And, and you got to understand too that there's whales in here that have over 100 plots. Uh, I'm sure they have second wallets. They have Uber plots. So they're, you, you know, like it's, I'm just a, a small guy, right? When, when we talk about things in the grand scheme of things. And I know that there's a ton of other small guys that have one or two plots that are, are just trying to accumulate as many hoard tokens as they can so that they can compound. Um, so that's just something to, to watch out for. Um, but at this point in time, 
I would say, you know, definitely try to mitigate as much risk as possible and just watch the numbers, watch the sentiment, watch what the team is doing in the community and, uh, and yeah, make the best informed decision you can based on the information that we have available to us. Like I said, that's why I wanted to get this video out. So hopefully this helps you understand, um, a, a couple things, right? Like the overall health of the protocol and don't just take my word for it. Go look at this stuff yourself form your own decision or your own opinion based on all the information. Like I said, it's important to, to do that, to form that opinion based on all the information, not just because you like the development team, not just because you like Horde uh, in general. When I first got into Horde, I really loved the branding. I was a sucker for their branding and that's what kind of drew me to the, the protocol. But, um, you know, as time progresses, as the protocol ages, these are things that you need to be aware of. Um, and I think that uh, that's what warranted this video today. And I'm glad that you watched this. Hopefully you watched it to the end to make sure that you're gathering all the information that you need to make the best decision that you can on your journey throughout Horde and in passive income in the DeFi space in general. Other than that, guys, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one.